Hello adventurers, welcome back to our Gloomhaven Guildmaster campaign. I'm Teddy Ninja, and this is a early access build of the game. <clears throat> In our last episode, we played with the level 2 Brute, and so per how we have set up the campaign, we're going to swap him out to be able to spread the love between all of our starting characters. We're looking for a backup character for the Spellweaver here at either the Cragheart or the Mind Thief. We could go back to the Tinkerer, but I was not really enjoying my time with the Tinkerer. We will suffer through it to get the Tinkerer a couple level ups to see what they really have to offer, but I would rather look at these guys first. So here we have the Mind Thief, who is a melee combo plus control slash summoner that's what the game says weaknesses is a fragile melee character often confused for a giant rat okay okay and then the Cragheart here melee or ranged multi-role that sounds very ambiguous high health plus reasonable healing I feel like to be able to back up the very fragile but high damage spell weaver that we would play the Cragheart. He can be a sort of take take the role of our brute who is kind of the melee tank. We'll see what the Cragheart has. So let's go over his cards. Uh, we have opposing strike. He attacks in front and behind him. And then on the bottom, on the next six melee attacks targeting you, gain Retaliate 2. Okay, so that's interesting as a lost card. Getting Retaliate 2, it's only going to work in melee. But it means that you will do 12 damage, which is incredibly high for any of the cards that we've seen so far. Crushing Grasp, attack 3, and immobilize, create Earth. Anything with create elements is good for comboing with the Spellweaver. She likes... Being able to consume those for extra damage and experience. Avalanche. Consume Earth to get an additional attack and XP. Okay, but that's a lost. Then on the bottom, create two single hex obstacles and empty hexes adjacent to you. Oh. Oh, the tricks we could play with that. <clears throat> Being able to mess with enemies by placing down obstacles to mix up rooms, turn them into mazes. Heal 4, range 2, create earth. Wow, that is... That is a very potent heal for this level. It's better than what the Tinkerer was giving us. And they were dedicated support. Move 2, all adjacent allies and enemies suffer 1 damage. Okay, so that hurts everybody around them. Creates earth on either side of the card. Interesting. Massive boulder, attack 3, range 3. All allies and enemies adjacent to the target suffer one damage so he is very much with these two cards at least area of effect around his focus target and he has move four move three it looks like he's pretty mobile so far his initiatives have been very slow rock tunnel destroy one adjacent obstacle okay so if you make them you have to be able to break them and then Move 5, jump, immobilize, target all enemies moved through as a loss. Unstable upheaval, loss card on both sides, but good initiative. I eh, do not like this style of card. Attack 3, target all adjacent enemies. And if you consume earth, target all enemies up to 2 hexes away instead. All adjacent allies suffer 2 damage. So, this is an enormous attack if you are at the center of a clump of enemies. It probably ha it has the highest ceiling of any card that we've seen. And then on the bottom, all allies suffer 1 damage. Shield 2 affect all allies. Ugh. Don't really like that bottom part even even on top of being a lost. Crater. Attack three, range three. If you consume earth, you also push. Wow, being able to push off of a range attack 
is very interesting. I wonder if you're able to push in any direction or if it is still pushing away from you. I assume it is still pushing away from you. All adjacent allies and enemies suffer one damage. Move forward, jump. All adjacent allies and enemies suffer one damage. Uh, if you consume Earth, it's two damage instead. Okay, so everybody around you gets hurt. You then jump to a new location, and everybody around you there gets hurt again. Okay. Dirt Tornado. Attack 1, range 2. But you get to hit... Whew! You get to hit seven hexes, and if you consume Earth, you get an additional attack and an XP, and you muddle all allies and enemies in the target area. But you don't do damage to your allies, you would only muddle them. Okay, so that is like, it is the highest damage ceiling on any non-loss card we've seen. So this guy has some incredible upsides if he's fighting lots of enemies. Unfortunately, we've seen so many enemies with armor that this would be heavily negated. Earthen Clawed, attack 2, range 5, so very long range. And if you consume Earth, you immobilize. And on the bottom, you get the heal 2, range 3. Pretty nice. The cards that we're not, we don't have by default. Heaving Swing, attack 3, push 1. You may push the target into hexes containing obstacles. In each case, destroy the obstacle. The target suffers 2 damage, and you gain an XP. Wow. That seems really good. Like, we would try to work that into use, because the push usually is only good if there are traps. But because this push, you can send them into obstacles, it gives you way more options on getting this extra 2 damage. And if you push them into a trap, the trap is going to probably damage them for even more, so... At the bottom, add plus one attack to all your range attacks this round. Well, that is actually not bad as the bottom part if you don't have to move and you can throw Dirt Tornado, right? Because then if you're consuming Earth, you have that enhancement and you are... No, that, yeah, those two things, you get up to damage three for all of those spaces, which... It's really, really good. In addition to muddling, wow. Okay, so we definitely want to try and bring this in. Forceful Storm, attack three, range three, disarm. Gain one for each enemy targeted. And create wind. But it's a lost card. I feel like we have other lost cards that we like more, like the... Uh... Oh, where was the one that did all the crazy damage? Did I miss this before? I think I skipped over backup ammunition. On your next four range attacks, gain add target. Whew! That is amazing because like massive boulder suddenly being effectively doubled. That is so good. Okay. So, we cover this. Oh man, I misread this too. It's plus two attack on all of your melee. No, no, no. This one is one attack to all your range. This one is two attack to all of your melee attacks. Okay. The melee attacks don't seem to be as strong for this character. Oh, it's this one. That is a high... Yeah, this is the lost card that we would want to play. <clears throat> you don't want to play too many lost cards because then you just get exhausted and we've we've seen that happen plenty of times.
All right. Nature's lift. Heal two, range three, target two. So you can, we could target ourselves and the Spellweaver. This is probably better with more party members, but more party members was just slowing down the levels so much. On your next six range attack actions where air is strong or waning, consume air to add plus two range. Uh, I'm not too impressed with Nature's Lift. We have some other healing cards and adding the range is not as interesting as adding the damage to me. So do we like Forceful Storm? There's a loss on top and the bottom. Like once we level up and potentially take more melee attacks, this could be pretty good. Yeah, two attack to all your melee attacks this round. But I don't think it's that great. So that leaves us with Heaving Swing. <clears throat> I think we do want to work this in. So what do we drop? Um, I mean, it hurts to drop our only good initiative. But this was one of the weaker cards, I felt like. Mm. Well... I could see us using that lost effect to pretty good effect, so I think we'll take we'll we'll keep it. Um, what else do we like? Oh, adding targets it just feels really good. Massive boulder. No, we want that's one of our range attacks. The rumbling advance is a nice heal. The avalanche. We need the avalanche for creating these obstacles because they combo with us being able to push guys into the obstacles. So I think we want that. Um, opposing strike. That's just one of our melee attacks. So this is where the forceful storm would potentially up this. If you have this set up, there's a guy in front of you and right behind you. You can suddenly attack them both for five in one round, which is a good round, but I don't see it being set up that way very often. Um, we could drop Crushing Grasp. The attack Immobilize. I mean, creating Earth is nice. But the bottom loot is just not interesting. Um... I do kind of want to try and set this up. Um, rock tunnel. Destroy one adjacent obstacle. I don't see us ever using the lost on bottom. The question is, do we feel like we need to be able to destroy obstacles? I feel like that kind of just synergizes so much with the rest of his game plan. Hmm, it's hard to say what I want to drop here. This isn't doing too much for us. We probably use it for the heal more than the attack. Though, it's a great, it's a great move for if he's going to open a door, he can then Attack at range 5, probably not get attacked back. It's hard to say without playing the cards what the weak member is. So honestly, I'm going to drop Rock Tunnel and pick up Heavy Swing here. Okay, his starting items. He has Boots of Striding and a Power Potion. This is damage, this is extra movement. We have 29 gold, I think we'll just save that gold. Um, to get him some other item. Alright. On our way to the Scoundrels special mission, Payday. Uh, so I think that we will continue on this path to be able to unlock that. Alright, here we go. <clears throat> the Hounds of Despair, a fledging shrine to the Great Oak, was overrun by a pack of ravenous wild dogs who scared away or killed all the followers. The Craigheart wants to help recover the Holy Shrine. Ah, so I, I am the Craigheart. But this mission was already there. I wonder if you... 
We'll see if we get any bonus for bringing the Kragheart on this specific mission. So the Kragheart character is the religious one. Follower of the Great Oak. As you near the location of the temple, you hear the baying of hounds coming from within. The local area is littered with bones and shreds of clothing. You are glad you were not here to see the carnage when the pack attacked. The smell coming from the tombs is unpleasant. With a lack of food available, it seems the dog have resorted to eating the long dead. You need to be careful of infection while fighting. Do not like the sound of that. Uh, we lose if the Craigheart is exhausted. Normally you can keep playing if one of your characters is exhausted. All enemies have poison added to their attacks. Oh, all enemies. And our objective is to survive 10 more rounds. I don't know why they say more in there, but we will see. So this is not our usual clear the dungeon. It is pull up by the shrine and just survive the waves of wolves. Okay, so poison is going to be very annoying. It will add one damage every time we get attacked until we heal, and then it cancels our healing. These dogs look diseased. Be aware, they have poison on all their attacks. I'm pretty sure if you can survive long enough, they'll turn tail and run. Okay, so they have the spawn in next round. There's loot back there. But right now we're just facing facing off with the two wolves. Okay. How do we want to open up? What are our range attack options? I actually might like creating the obstacles right here. We could pop them down in front of us, and then that lengthens the path to get to us quite a bit. They'll have to swing around this way, just four spaces, and over here is three spaces. So this guy can probably make it to us, but I think this guy might have trouble. And even if they do, if they're standing on either side here, that sets up the perfect um, opposing strike for the cry card. So we are going to open up with that. Create two single hex obstacles and empty hexes adjacent to you. Now, ideally for that to work, we would need to go early enough that <laughs> his initiatives are so bad. We would want to go before the wolves go to get them down before they just rush in front of us. Um, the alternative opening, I think, would be Dirt Tornado to add Muddle to them. Ah, and they have Retaliate. Ouch. Okay. But yeah, if we had Dirt t Tornado to Muddle them, and then we would take a, a high initiative to try and Muddle them before they got their attacks off. Because as it is here, I'm not even going to attack with him. Feels like a bit of a waste. I could take Earth and Claude, but it's only two damage. And its initiative is slow enough that the wolves probably go faster. I feel like I remember the wolves being pretty quick. So we are going to lean into this, using him as a obstacle generator. And then for the spell weaver. We really liked having our spectral ally here. And then uh, that is the bottom of the card, so we get the top of another card. Ooh. I mean. I think we actually play for being kind of slow. Yeah, we'll take the frost armor but not use it as our initiative. This way we go after the Kragheart and we'd better go after the wolves. So they'll be in range 
and there will be earth which will augment the attack and then we're going to look to try and use fire orbs in the next turn to get all three of them all right they do go slow attack two pierce two move three attack two pierce two okay yeah so he gets the the elite here gets the move three which then there's no way to keep him from reaching the crag heart but that's all right let's see what these look like oh nice these these rocks are huge i love it okay and then we just skip the attack And it means that we could have used Earth and Glod and still gone faster than them. Yeah, I'll take the damage. Now I'm poisoned. Ah, so... Was this guy always just hiding in the corner and we didn't see him? I feel silly if they snuck an extra wolf in there that I didn't see. I feel like he spawned in. I could be wrong, though. All right, so we want our mystic ally as far back as we can get him. And then we're going to take frost armor here. <coughs> and uh, consume the earth to extra damage. Strike out over here. Okay. We can use fire orbs. We can again try and slow play it so that the wolves come to us to be in range. And then we can use this to heal up the crag card if he's going to take a bunch of damage. Which means that for the Crag Heart, we probably also want to have a heal. One's going to clear the poison and one is actually going to help him. So if he takes Earth and Claude here, he gets to heal himself. An opposing strike. It will go, actually choose to go slower here. Hmm. Yeah. I think that's the play. Nah, they're going so fast anyway. Okay. Move five, attack three. Ooh, this this is definitely going to hurt. We might end up burning some cards here because uh, this. Well, this guy goes first. He's gonna attack three, and then this guy's gonna attack four. And maybe he'll draw the crit fail. You know, that's what we hope for. Nope, you drew the crit success. That's where you burn a card. Definitely where you burn a card. Um. Well, when we're burning a card, we probably cannot set up as many lost cards as we were thinking of before, so... Um, backup ammunition goes away. There's so many lovely obstacles for being able to use his uh, special smash. Uh, yeah, I'll take the five damage, I guess. Everything is enhanced because of the poison. It's so bad. We have to survive ten rounds of this. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. Okay, so we heal, we heal away the poison. And then we smack these guys. Yes. Oh, he has retaliate. 
This still hurts us. This might be a quick restart, honestly. Okay, that was a good pull. Okay. Fire orbs. This is the biggie. We want to wipe the room. So we're going to take advantage and extra damage. And we just want to burn every single one of these guys. Didn't quite get him. We got him though. Alright. It feels like it was worth it then to spend all that equipment. Hmm, we would really love an extra obstacle right in here. We would really love that. Because we could, I mean, we just have to survive the rounds. <laughs> we, the crag heart could just wall us off and we wait it out and then this, I mean, we have range attacks. I don't know what the AI would do if we are considered blocked off. I assume that they would still try and move up here and we just hit them with the range attacks. So that would be the best. I think, um, ah. Uh, the thing is, if I short rest here, the odds are actually pretty good that I lose one of the important cards to set that up. And they're just going to be coming in single file anyway. I could make the rumbling advance. Or really just doing range attacks here. So this is our fastest initiative. Well, here we go. We want her to go as fast as possible. So we'll use Freezing Nova and Flame Strike. For some reason I thought that I still had Mana Bolt. But I've spent... Spent both of these, burn that, that's still active. Okay. <clears throat> Which means that you can do kind of... Kind of whatever you want. Meaning, healing yourself. Wow, healing myself and looting these two spots? Maybe that's what I do. Yep, this is the rare case where loot one on bottom is what we want. Did I have another heal? I don't think I did. Okay. There we go. Hounds move to. They're going slow. Okay. We can manage this. Mystic's ally has our back. Do we have the ability to reach out and hit this guy? Actually, I don't think we do. Attack 2, range 2. Attack 3, range 2. Yep. Okay, not bad. We want him to cycle some more cards and then... Hmm. I actually don't like moving the Spellweaver up there. Because now I'm stuck with very low initiative. Very low initiative cards that don't do much. Okay.
We can use Crater to try and create distance to protect her, but our initiative is so slow it probably will not work. Still worth a try, I guess. Um, I'm going to scrap Dirt Tornado. So use the bottom of it, and that way we keep Massive Boulder and Heavy Swing open for next round. Ah, he's going so fast. I think he kills the Mystic Ally here. No, he goes for us. Okay. Honestly, I'm okay with that. I plan on keeping the Spell Weaver out of harm's way for, like, the rest of the rounds. Ah, uh, no. We're getting poisoned. Okay. Use the crater. Get the push. Uh, I'm not going to use the power potion yet. But we definitely like being able to push them away because they have that ability that means they get to attack whatever is right around them at the beginning and then move and attack again. So you really get punished if they are starting next to you. Is this his reshuffle? No, he has one more. Because I would like to seal off one of these places. Maybe I move up here. Because then I can place my... Well, there's loot here. I don't know if it's going to consider that as an unoccupied space. Hmm. Interesting questions. Okay, well, we can... Uh, do very little with these cards besides the basics. So we'll move her in. And punch! Punch my wizard! Oh! Who knew? She should have gone into boxing! Draws the plus two for the hit. What is this? Heavy swing, massive boulder, and a short rest. Yes. No, we lose mana bolt. Mana Bolt is our best initiative. Okay. Um, what do we like? What do we like? So he is going slow. If he gets to use Massive Boulder, I have a feeling he's going to use Heavy Swing, though. There, there would be Earth. So... Maybe just Flame Strike and Reviving Aether. This way, we want to pair these high initiatives with our better initiatives so we're not stuck like last time going so slow in the round. And then, did she have a heal? I thought she had a heal. Was it on Mana Bolt? Ah, oh, it was on Mana Bolt. We lost our heal. Okay. For now, because she'll get to get him back later. Oh, they go so fast. <coughs> okay, let's see what they got. They're going to fill up these spaces and just mess with the Cragheart. He's been muddled. Punch him. Man, this summon is turning out to be one of the best cards. We just need to be right here to be in range. And they're both the same.
Here we go. Oh, the crit. That's so good. She got the plus two and then the crit on top of her deck. Okay, so it's only push one to throw them into obstacles. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. We could move on to the loot and then punch this guy into the rock, which will kill him. And that is normally a great turn, but it would destroy one of these obstacles that we have set up so carefully to be able to like block off this corner effectively where we could then just pass all the rounds and, and win. Um, another good option for us would be running over here and then throwing the massive boulder at him because of the retaliate. And then we're in place to throw down the other obstacle here. I guess, I don't know if we can skip the second one or if we have to put it here. And then the only way in is this single point, choke point. We'll do that. Hmm, I could have gone all the way to here, but then placing the two obstacles would block me in. I could use the power potion to try and guarantee he dies. But I think that the Spellweaver... Oh, baby. So I drew two because I was muddled and they were both amazing. <laughs> ah! We definitely have Lady Luck on our side this game, guys. Okay, yeah, we're fine losing Rumbling Advance. It's our heal, but uh, who needs to heal when the enemy has no way to get to you, right? Right? We'll use Unstable Upheaval again just for the initiative. And then over here... Hmm, Mr. Wolf, can you run four? You're not elite, so I don't think you can. So I will take Frost Armor and Ride the Wind, but I'm going to use the slower initiative of Ride the Wind. That'll be the turn. Here we go. Ah, of course. He does get to move four, and he'll just kill her. Well... That's unfortunate. Okay, we can. We can just make one if we want to. We don't have to make the two. All right, so we're kind of boxing ourselves in here. And then we will skip attack. And his turn. Here comes the hound. Gonna mess up the Spellweaver's day. Ah, he kills the summon. Um, I am surprised, but I am also fine with that. So we will back off to be able to get the most out of our range attack. Being in melee would mean that we were attacking at disadvantage, and we would have been subject to retaliation. How many more good modifiers do you have in there? Ah, none. Okay. It's too bad, I was kind of hoping that we would still have the Mystic Ally here, but you can't get it all. Hmm. What do we want to use here? I think we want to have Crushing Grasp for the fastest initiative we can get. Because what's the Spellweaver have? Ah, the Spellweaver is going to be able to short rest here. Yes, short rest. We lose Frost Armor. We're losing all of our basic attacks. But that's fine. So... Mm. I would rather not use Freezing Nova. 
for initiative because then I'm stuck with the dead turn again. But I really want to use Flame Strike here. And I also want to be able to go ahead of the wolves. 21 does not guarantee it, but 21 helps. So we'll take that. Crushing Grasp to go as fast as we can. And then, you know, if the Spellweaver get well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dort, dirt tornado, dort, dort tornado, for our movement. Okay, so Craigheart wasn't fast enough, but Spellweaver was. So this is the big test. Ah, she's always come up with the right modifier. It feels so good. Hmm, do I want to waste a heal on clearing poison? I don't think so. He's gonna move four. One, two, three, four. So he's gonna be right there. I think I just skip movement. This actually works out that the Craigheart was slower in this turn of events where the Spellweaver finished him off. Because now. Hmm. If I attack him. I will take Retribution, which I do not want to do if I use Dirt Tornado. I don't take Retribution. And I muddle him. Now, it's only one damage though. Well, it's a plus one. Okay. We're okay with this. And then I don't think he needs to move. All right, we survived seven rounds. We're going on round eight. We're doing fine, guys. We're doing fine. Then now the spellweaver has her worst turn. And hmm. What is the play out of the Cragheart? I feel like the play out of the Cragheart is to go as fast as he can. And... It's either heavy swing to get the push. Or it is massive boulder. Okay, so they are going super fast. Ah, this guy goes first, so he's not going to get into our little haven. This guy though is able to step up and muddle us. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm going to heal the poison off of the Cragheart, and then I'm going to chuck the boulder off of this guy. Wow, we've been fighting through the muddle pretty well, always drawing our positive modifiers. Does she even want to attack? She's going to get retaliated. Is retaliate one. Um, if that procs the poison, then we do just as much. Yeah, it's pathetic. But if we move here and go invisible, I actually kind of like that. And then we could loot this. We just wouldn't do any damage. We'll move here. We'll attack this guy. Ah. 
Great. Then we'll go invisible. <coughs> the whole point is just to stall for three more rounds. Okay, we don't have too many options here. So, I mean, crater? Probably crater? Heavy swing. We'll take crater. And over here, we're doing our short rest. See, this is it. You cannot lose reviving ether, so we redraw. And we lose flame strike instead. This leaves us with no good cards. So I think that this is where We're actually going to use Reviving Aether to get these back. Move for attack to do a lot of damage. This is really not the worst thing that could have happened to us. Yeah, I'll take the damage. Because these guys outside... Ah, so he does not get to move at all if he thinks that we're blocked off. So they wouldn't come up for us to pepper them with range attacks, but we never fully sealed ourselves off anyway, so I think that the way we have things set up is fine. So we want we have to use the top here, and we use the bottom here, so we run her into the corner, as any good wizard knows, and then we do this. Get them all back. Lovely. Okay, I can actually go for killing this wolf better than I can this one. Do I want to set up this? Can he retaliate? It's probably not that great. Um, I think gaining the push 2 is pretty good, and we don't have to use the power potion yet. Confirm attack. Oh, okay. It's a really bad modifier. But I can push him back to be make it really hard for him to be able to do damage to any of us. Uh, I could use the boots to get all the way away from this guy. Maybe I do that. Just two more rounds. I'm pretty sure we've got this. Short rest the crag heart. We lose dirt tornado. Because we can use the initiative jump that we like so much. And then play. Hmm. What's our good range attack? Crater. Massive boulder. Yeah, it's massive boulder. And then for her, we have mana bolt back, we have frost armor back, we have so many options. Flame strike, yes, yes, yes. Mana bolt, flame strike. Mana bolt, flame strike should just kill him, which means that actually with the crag heart, we can go to avalanche. I kind of want to do it. Do the full seal off. Uh, yes. Yes. It's going to work. So she's going to go. She's going to kill the wolf. Then he's going to go. He's going to walk up here. And he's going to finish the building the wall. 
They are too slow to stop us. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. All right, we'll consume the darkness that we made from turning invisible. Or actually, I think it's from the reviving ether. All right, now this just has to work. Oh no, the crit fail. The only thing stopping us. Oh, it feels so bad. What are they doing? Moving and attacking? Ah, we only have one more round anyway. We'll just go up and punch him. Does he get to retaliate if he's dead? He doesn't. He can move pretty far. I don't like that. Okay, we burn a card. Uh, yeah, ride the wind. Why didn't I remove ride the wind? I was talking about this last episode. We don't care about you. Unable to break your resolve, the remaining hounds slink into the shadows and leave the tomb, scattering into the desert beyond. Poisonous hounds are even worse than normal hounds. Why don't people just own a cat like I do? Hey, so surviving 10 rounds, that was pretty cool. We got to use the Craig heart to build a fortress that we just camped out inside and uh, the storyline had the, gave the Craig Heart special connection to that mission, so it was pretty cool that we were able to pull that off. The uh, the failure to not fully seal us up early on, if we could have done that, it would have been amazing. Thank you for cleansing the temple of those vile hounds. Our followers will soon return and get the site functional again. As a token of our thanks, we will supply your merchant with our powerful healing potions. Oh, yes, please. Better healing potions, always. All right, we're gonna check the quests here. Unlock chapter 1.2. Gain an enhancement slot. We'll claim this rewards. Continue. You've made a good start on heading southwest and we've got a few more towns contacting us for help all the way to the coast. Er, boss? There's a Esther woman here who wants to see you. She says she might be able to help us. What you are doing, reconnecting people, driving back the darkness, and preserving the weak, I deem it worthy. I shall grant you access to my enhancements. Come visit my tent, and together we shall improve your warrior's prowess. The more towns you unlock, the more powerful you can become. Well, she was straight to the point. And in Enchantress, be aware, her services don't come cheap. Now we have unlocked more of the world. Prepare for the danger to increase, but don't worry, the rewards will follow suit. I've also unlocked some more achievements to aim for. Hey, I was wondering if they were going to give us more or if we were seeing everything they had, particularly because it was early access. So we get another enhancement slot once we unlock 11 locations and a bunch of new storylines. Hmm, these are out of order. Very nice. Very curious to see how much of the story and campaign has been fleshed out in early access here. Ah, the brute reaches level two, so we get the brute's story quest. We'll take that. An old friend has contacted the Brute with regards to a caravan guard mission he needs help with. Go check it out. Sudden strike. The scoundrel has moved 120 hexes. Very appropriate for how mobile the scoundrel is. We get a perk point for that. And then... Ah, the enhancements. 
Use bless 20 times. So this we can buy from the temple. Inflict curse 20 times. We have no way to inflict curse that we've seen so far. Inflict disarm 20 times. Okay. Interesting. So... My understanding is unlocking these means... So basically, my understanding of enhancements is that we have some ability cards. I think I can show it. World map. Go to cards here and say uh, Flame Strike. You see how there is a slight gray dot next to range? Or down here, attack two and then a dot, and range two and then a dot. These are spots for enhancements. It says no enhancement right now. But the enchantress here should be able to add a modifier so we can increase damage, we can increase range, we can increase targets, we can add elements at status effects. But all of the status effects looks like they're locked behind quests. This screen allows you to add enhancements to all of your abilities. Select the ability, then the enhancement slot, and then the enhancement you wish to add to that slot. Be aware that different enhancements cost a different base amount and that the cost is modified by the number of enhancements already on the card and the type of ability it is. When you remove an enhancement, you recover its original cost. That's nice that they give you back the full price so that, like, if we wanted to make our bread and butter spell here, Mana Bolt, a little better, we can, but then... Yeah, so here the only thing we can do is plus attack. But later on, say we get stun. Having a mana bolt that stuns is better than a mana bolt that just does one extra damage. So we could get all the money back for having the damage and then put stun on. I think the price also scales for like the level two cards versus the level one cards. And in the game, in the board game, there is a whole complicated matrix of how you calculate the price of things. So yeah, here, fire orbs. Fire orbs, adding the attack here is more expensive. It's more expensive because it is impacting multiple targets versus a single target spell where it's only 50. So it doubles, seems to double the cost. Base cost, ah, oh, is it gonna break it down for me? I hope it does. Yep, base cost times two. It doesn't say why it's times two, but as long as this is still pulling from the same things as the board game did, it is because it has multiple targets. So these are super expensive, but incredibly powerful. A very good way to spend our money. Though right now we're kind of just trying to get base equipment on guys. I was hoping that this would unlock, but it looks like we have to play some more missions to get here. But we will see... Um, what our next travel or job will be. Ah, hey. More jobs up here. Yeah, so we're going to figure out what our next moves are going to be in the next episode. Thank you guys for watching this Gloomhaven early access campaign. I'm Teddy Ninja. I'm having a ton of fun with this game, and I hope to see you guys in the next episode.